Yes, please go ahead. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I'll stick to my local time and say good morning. Um, we just had sunrise. I'm based in Austria, Vienna. Um, and like to quickly introduce myself um, before I go into the actual content of my presentation. Um, my name is Thomas or Tom, as most people call me Lutz. Um, I work for um, Frequentis New Business Development Department. Um, currently a system architect. I'm active in various topics. Uh, most of them deal with information management. Um, with large distributed systems, um, almost 20 years now. And one of the um, of the major domain um, interests um, is currently on drones, unmanned area systems, and especially the traffic management part of, of these systems. Um, just noticed that I do not have turned on my camera. Just a second, so you can see me as well. Now, yeah, hello again, good morning. Um, I'm the technical lead in a few research projects, um, as well as commercial projects that deal with this aspect. And today um, I will talk about them um, and explain how we have um, both in research and commercial projects um, connected ATM, UTM, um, bringing both words together, ensuring that um, stakeholders, especially close to airports, have a common situational overview. Let me go to um, a quick recap of which entities we have to address um, when we talk integrated airspace management. And actually, this is what, what for us UTM is about um, when we have to tackle integrated airspace management around towers. Um, naturally, and of course, this involves air navigation service providers, which typically have the FRS service providers included. Um, you need aeronautical data, you need the airport organization itself. Um, you have a new entity, a uh, new role actually, um, um, called um, sometimes USB service providers, unmanned traffic service providers, the USSBs. And sometimes even now already, um, space activities start up. Um, this is the stakeholder view, um, and then there's a second view that deals with flight phases. Um, and the same thing as for stakeholders um, applies to flight phases as well. For us, it doesn't make much of a difference if an unmanned vehicle is, um, um, how to say, operating in a segregated airspace or in an integrated airspace. It actually doesn't matter at all if it's unmanned or if it's manned. Um, from our way of thinking, from the way of, of how we try to approach things from an operations and from a technology, technology perspective, um, it's just an aircraft. Um, it's utilizing space. It has the same flight phases. And with our existing products um, and um, combined with new products to bring those existing products together, we capture all the flight phases and all the stakeholder perspectives of UTM in, in, in projects, especially in ongoing validation projects such as COV2. I think before we go into detail, it's quite important to have a quick overview on how a cross-cut view of, of this whole environment of this ecosystem would look like. And on this slide, I think I'll stay a bit longer. Let me underline this is the current view. Huh? So this um, might change, borders might disappear, um, but from what you currently see um, in ongoing regulatory work in Europe, um, what you see from current ongoing uh, regulatory work in, in, in um, the Asia region, in the US region, there's always this concept of we do have existing airspace, controlled airspace dealt with in ATM. Typically, you have a smaller portion of airspace, less lower than 500 feet, um, currently not controlled, um, where UTM systems, concepts like the European new space are put up. Um, on this drawing, on this overview, I try to, to put up uh, a scheme on how entities, stakeholders and services actually connected to each other. So what I'm trying to talk to explain today is the UTM service, which is here quite central in the middle. And this UTM service is connected to um, the end user. Let us start here. End user would be us, 
when we utilize services from drone operators. Which services could that be? Well, um, this could be commercial services like getting um, aerial data um, just from a drone and not from a helicopter, pictures from real estate, um, pictures from, from social events, but as well um, looking more at, at organizations close to a state, um, aerial overview for public safety entities, um, dispatch um, uh, entities, um, disaster recovery uh, scenarios. So in a nutshell, the end user has a need um, for some airborne activities, tasks, or there's a drone operator to perform that mission. And now the drone operator needs to take care of actually get an approval for this mission. So focusing here not on the on the operations of the drone itself, but more on this process of before flight declaring my attend as drone operator, getting an approval authorization for this flight, depending on the area, and for the flight itself, then get awareness. So what's, what, what does the drone operator have to do? Typically, it talks to a UTM service. That UTM service has a few input sources to decide whether flight is possible or not possible. Let me start with the, uh, with the obvious one. Um, in Europe, it's called the Common Information Service. Um, in the US, it's called the FIMS, the FIMS. Um, typically, there's an entity that provides access to information. Um, that information is AIM data, airspace data. Um, that information could as well include ground risk data. Um, anything that you need to provide geo-awareness, um, the context in which the operation takes place. Two other sources of data, um, the concept of a drone registry. Um, in, in very simple terms, the license plate that the drone has attached to itself so that somebody can identify the drone and ideally the operator as well. There might be data attached like which trainings um, um, operators, pilots have to do or have already successfully performed. This is like a lookup. Um, you could imagine it like being the license plate register just for, for drones and, and not for aircraft. Third source of, of um, input for UTM services that provide flight approvals, something that defines rules and constraints. Um, I am not allowed to fly within a certain distance of certain um, objects on the ground, for example, kindergartens um, or public assemblies or critical infrastructure or, of course, towers or um, other ATM infrastructure. A source of rules related to specific objects on the ground or in the air and a source of constraints, which um, typically refer to things like in this area, you have um, limits with regards to noise, to amount of lights, uh, based on public acceptance or some environmental constraints that you have to fulfill. This um, source of, of, of input data is, is a very relevant one to define whether and how a UTM service could approve a flight or not. Last but definitely not least, um, very important stakeholder, and this is something where we validate a lot currently, um, existing infrastructure, ATC, ATM, or in other terms, uh, the area around an airport, very close to the airport, um, flying in and out of CTR um, for simulated use cases like um, emergency delivery of, of um, medical things um, to and from an airport. Um, maybe for very fast deliveries, um, logistic centers close to the airports, but use cases on the airport itself, plane inspection, um, data collection for things like, like ETO databases. There's a lot of drone activity um, that needs to be coordinated and managed around the airport. All of those things relate to an UTM service. Um, before I move on to the next slide, um, this is not only um, a cross cut through the airspace itself, um, in one or the other wording, you will find the same entities um, in, in all of the concepts that we currently see in, in ongoing work. Things like the service provider, um, terms like the drone operator. Now, how do we approach this? And less theory now. Um, we thought already um, like five years ago that we should take it from end user perspective and end users we see on both sides. We see end users on drone operator side and on the airspace manager side. In one of the first projects that we've been part of, the, the Gulf of Finland Gov U space project, um, we started from the end user side in the meaning of 
drone operator and user flight side in the defined use cases um, fly drones in town um, either by police or with police intervention cooperate with maritime forces in search and rescue operations um, cooperate um, with logistics company uh, simulating international parcel delivery between Helsinki Tallinn, actually flying quite a distance over the Gulf of Finland. Um, um, flying in, in Tallinn itself, uh, same use case as Helsinki and typically use cases in, in remote areas, uh, infrastructure uh, inspection, power grid lines, um, forest in in inspections, things where you can just fly the wheelers uh, beyond visual line of sight because there's not many um, uh, things that are in your way, not so much ground risk remote areas. Reason for these use cases is this is what drone operators currently want to do, what end users already uh, want to do and can pay for. This is valid use cases that you can probably find in, in, in any um, um, area of the world. Goal of the project was enable those use cases and enable stakeholders to have one thing, um, which sounds quite simple, um, to enable them to access a common operational picture. Everybody in this partnership should have uh, should be aware of who is going to fly when, so declaration of intent, and for the current um, moment in time, who is where in the air right now, sharing surveillance data in, in another terms. Um, we had close to, to 20 partners in there, ANSBs, drone operators, drone manufacturers, um, first urban air mobility um, um, uh, use cases were simulated as well, so we had a, an air taxi flying on an airport, but still the goal was integrate systems, be it ANSB, be it USB service provider, be it manufacturer or drone operator, have everybody on the same system of systems connected um, to have the same information at the same time. Actually, this project was quite successful. So um, soon after, like almost a year after, first commercial projects came up. Um, of course, use cases and of course systems um, in production are a bit different from those things that we try out in research projects, but still it was the same concept behind and the same um, software behind just in the product version. Dealing with, in a nutshell, flight approvers um, on 17 airports in Norway, um, including, for example, Oslo, you can see it here. Same story as before, two important stakeholders. In that case, the tower controller, so the ATCO, um, on the airspace management side, on the approver side, and private drone pilots on the end user side. Bring those two together, uh, bring those two together, enable drone operators to fly in close vicinity of an airport. Technology behind, I've been listening before for quite a while, um, SWIM. Full system um, based on SWIM principles. Um, SWIM principles, the principles part is important. Um, I'll come to that in a minute. Not every protocol and format is, is um, classic uh, SWIM, like FIXM or like AIXM, um, but the concept behind are the same. Document your data model on a logical level, document interface to service behavior. We utilized um, IKEA SWIM principles a lot in realizing both Gov and the other projects that we have. Um, looking at time, I'll skip the next slide because I think the cycle itself is not super important and go on on the SWIM principles that we applied. What we think and what we've seen in the projects, um, service providers, um, industry, manufacturers, drone operators is that it always follows the same pattern. Um, you need something that enables you to fly drones. This something consists of constraints, rules, and for sure some sort of governance. Then you need um, a network of, of, of data. You need to connect this network of data of information somehow. Um, you need to make it accessible using services. Um, and somebody needs to take care of those services. Um, and we found out in the project that um, based on experience and operational experience, um, we just need to turn around and look at the things that we already have. Um, based on IKEA principles, put up uh, a network of, of, of systems connected to each other, a system of systems um, run by somebody that already has experience in, in aviation and in the respective operational procedures. This package has a purpose. It enables flights. It enables train operations, uh, train drone operations, sorry, I was looking at public transport. Um, in a nutshell, it enables service provision 
to airspace users, which is actually the title of the slide. It doesn't matter if it's a defense entity, it doesn't matter if it's a first responder um, in, in the need of sending out a drone to get aerial overview um, in firefighting, for example, in Paris for Notre Dame, um, for the incident, they had five drones getting an overview, dispatching the firefighters to the correct place. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if it's public transport between infrastructure and in inspection. And I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if the industry um, scanning critical infrastructure or doing um, power grid inspections or infrastructure cans. For all of them, it's the same thing. They all have the same need. They need to get a flight authorization. That's the services on the right side. They need to get awareness of what's going on there. They need to have traffic information, surveillance, and they need to have a few other services to be able to operate the drones and to be able to operate um, in a way so that it's a useful service to actual end users. Both of them, services and the, the, the stakeholder environment, they are based on connectivity, on making sure that you're based on standards and on interoperable services um, so that the services can connect to each other and with a high amount of reuse, um, both in technical terms and in operational terms, um, make sure that an integrated airspace management works for both manned and unmanned traffic. Coming back to before, in the end, we think it's still an, um, an aircraft. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's manned or unmanned. What we do is we do cross domain connectors um, and of course we include commercial industry because this is actually where first use cases already evolve and where there's um, high rates in, 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 in business growth. A bit more technically without going into detail, um, that brings a few challenges. Um, in the ATM world, in our world, um, I think it's probably the highly standardized um, environment ecosystem. Um, safety is the highest value. We have things that are really well known all over the world, IKEA flight plans. Um, we have some of the SWIM standards like um, better data, IXM, airspace data. We have CONOPS. Long story short, everything that currently is in use is well thought through. Um, it has a long proven history. Um, some say it's a legacy system. Um, I prefer to say this is definitely a proven system. Um, with well established concepts and with a high degree of, of resilience. On the other hand, the drone system, um, I wouldn't call it unsa unsafe, but what I think is safe to say is that right now it's less standardized and um, there's less certification in there. You've got new formats, you have different needs with regards to scale. Of course, you need weather, um, but for most of the use cases, it's more a hyperlocal weather forecast instead of something that you take en route um, for, for um, air traffic between countries. You have more focus on mobile networks. Um, you have more focus on um, GPS and, and um, transmission data um, via, via Wi-Fi. Um, in a nutshell, it's different technology. Um, not yet the global standard is available and you somehow need to connect things. Same story here, to connect things, apply SWIM principles, um, apply a definition of services, apply behavior and make people understand so that those two systems can connect to each other, enable all the use, use cases down here from the different stakeholders. Five minutes to go. Um, quick look at one of the things that we have here on the, on the drone ecosystem, on the cell phone, on mobile network. Um, that's been quite a discussion in, in UTM and in, in drone operations in the last, I would say, four or five years. How to transport data, which transport layer to use, and given the scale and the low altitude that typically drones are flying in, um, what about mobile network? Can we use it? Um, can we go for things like upcoming standards or now already in place standards, things like 5G, as this one carrier um, as this one technology that enables you to, on a large scale, enable safe and efficient drone flights for a command link, controlling the drone, um, commanding the drone, and of course, for downlinks to share telemetry data on positions on declarations of instant. And a um, bit more detail here than before. 
Um, we did some research in, in, in projects in Gov2, in uh, Project Code 5 G drones. We tried to combine those two worlds and we found out, message up front, that the network actually does not need to be perfect to be used in um, aviation, in UTM. All we need to know is uh, the performance of this mobile network. How does this look like? A bit more uh, swim now. Yeah, one more minute to go. Yeah, I'm fine. Should be okay. One more. How does yes, this look? So how does this look like? We have a network coverage service um, that is in between the mobile network area on the left side and the aviation on the right side. Um, in a nutshell, it's quite simple. Aviation sends a flight plan to the service and the service hands back data that is located within mobile network operator premises. Typically, they're not so easy in sharing data. Um, so you need something in between that translates both between technical system and between the concepts that I use. And as a key part, it's always easier to visualize. You can see here now on the, um, on the, on the um, screenshot, how this looks like in real life. There's two versions of a flight. One goes direct, a bit more efficient, of course, with regards to distance, but you see here small red areas in um, where there's no connectivity. This flight was replanned to go slightly more south, where actually you have um, a better connectivity. Sorry, I accidentally clicked. Um, this shows how bringing two worlds together um, in one project based on twin principles, flying quite, quite, quite large drones, like you can see here, 216 um, large EV tool devices, um, can make things happen in an area close to an airport. The airport is here on the right side. Uh, flying in and out CTR in a safe and efficient way. Um, last slide. We think that it's quite easy to integrate things. Um, if you keep in mind a few concepts, you need to stick to the principles that we have for decades now. You need to make sure that everybody is on the same page, everybody has the same information. And you need to focus a lot on those things that we already have. You need to manage flights, you need to communicate, you need to operate. Um, if you unite things, if you consider anything up in the air being an aircraft and not make too much difference between manned and unmanned, then we think um, that benefiting from the ATM experience that, that all of us have, um, we can soon look at the first use cases to be applied, um, both in rural but as well in, in urban areas. And that concludes my presentation, almost in time. Thank you very much for listening. Um, handing back um, to the chair. Okay, thank you, Fikontes, uh, Thomas, and uh, UTM and the drone integration management, of course, is uh, one of the very hot topic um, in terms of new technology and uh, forthcoming um, technology trend. Okay, um, so um, we come to the end of the meeting today. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. On the on the uh, overtime that uh, we have um, today, 